Now let's look at diffraction through an aperture. A slit is sort of a one-dimensional aperture or hole. A real aperture now, we have to think in two dimensions, so things get complicated. Let's see, so I'm going to draw very carefully a screen, and it's sort of in three dimensions, and we're going to consider a square aperture. Okay, now it's small and we're doing far field diffraction just like I talked about before, but I'm drawing it big because you need to be able to see what I'm doing. So we have sort of a screen, it's sort of sitting in the plane of the board like this. I'm just trying to draw it where you can actually see it. And the light's going to go through the screen, or through, I'm sorry. We have an aperture, and it's sort of in the board like this. And the light's going to go through the aperture, and we're going to look at the pattern on a screen. Okay, this is a square aperture. No, it's a rectangular aperture. The screen is also in the plane of the board. They are parallel facing each other. I'm just trying to draw the important parts, okay? So, let's see. What we gotta do is divide the aperture up into, instead of little DS's, now we have to do DA's. We're gonna divide it on this axis in a little grid like this. And, whoops, and we're gonna divide it on this axis, a little grid like that. And what we're doing is envision, uh, envisioning a Howland's wavelet inside each little DA, okay? So we're going to treat the very center as the origin. So the center is the origin. And we're gonna call this uh, direction Y, and we're gonna call this direction X, and the aperture is, um, uh, let's see, it's A along the X direction and it's B along the Y direction, okay? And Y goes up and uh, X goes uh, that way and then Z is the optical axis, okay? So we don't need that right now. Okay, that's what we got. Now what we gotta do is, as always, figure out the field at point P by adding up all these little Howland wavelets as, as they move around. So we're going to say then this ray from the center. Remember last time we called it R and we said, well, it's kind of special, so we made R a constant. This time we're just going to come right out and say, this is constant big R. Okay? Well, we're figuring out what's happening at P. You draw a ray from the center of the aperture to P, and that's big R. And then you add up what happens due to every other Howland's wavelet uh, that's not at the center, and those you call little r, okay? All right, so we have big R, we have little r. We have a z-axis straight across from the aperture, or from the center of the aperture to the optical axis. And I think that's pretty much all we need. Okay, so now let's figure out what DEP is gonna be. The differential electric field at P, due to each one of these little Howland's wavelets, is gonna be EA this time over big R or little r. Um, let's call it little r. EA over little r, uh, DA. There we go. So maybe you can guess what EA is. It's the field amplitude per unit area. So I'm bypassing what we did for the slit or we call it E naught, and then the final, let's just go right out, the, right out the bat. EA is the field amplitude E naught per unit area, so you multiply it by DA, and that's kind of like E naught. Right? So we know that's what the amplitude of a spherical wave does. And then we need the oscillating part, E to the J, and I'm gonna use a convention omega T minus KR. All right. So we use a little r in both cases, because we're thinking about the field at, D, at P due to the Howland's wavelet that is a little r away. Okay. okay, so now to work with this, we have to think about two things. One is the position on the screen. OK, 
okay? So if this is the origin, the position of P, we're going to use big X, big Y, and big Z to be the position on the screen. X, big Y, big Z. All right? And if we're thinking about the position in the aperture, we're going to use little x, y, z. Position in the aperture x, little y, and actually 0. Because the origin sits in the middle of the aperture. So as you move around in that plane, little z is always 0. Okay, so we have those two positions. So now, to move forward, in dealing with our two r's, our big r and a little r, we need to write big r and little r in terms of x, y, and z. All right? So big r, the distance big r is always from the origin to the point p. So the distance big r is the square root of big x squared plus big y squared plus big z squared. Right? So that'll always be big r. We can write it that way. And the distance little r is also the square root, and it's not little x squared, little y squared, right? That's this. We're trying to figure out this distance. Well, the distance between any two points, it's always uh, this minus this in the x squared, this minus this in the y squared, and in the z squared. So this one is big x minus little x squared plus big y minus little y squared plus big z, and then little z is zero squared. So there we have our two r's. All right. So now we're going to move on, substitute them in, and see if we can pull this integral off, pull off this integral, do this integral. 